ready to dive in mm -hmm. to the power of now. Yeah. So this book, yeah. it's famous for making this whole idea of like spiritual enlightenment right. feel yeah. like something yeah. attainable. Oh, boy. like you know, we can actually achieve that in our own lives mm -hmm. and. Today, I think what we're going to do is unpack some of the, the most practical wisdom from the book. Sounds great. Um, and yeah. the, Eckhart Tolle gives us this yeah. map, mm -hmm. and we're going to explore the most intriguing landmarks together. What do you think? I love that. And I think what's so fascinating about his approach yeah. is that he doesn't uh, beat around the bush. Yeah. You know, he tackles the human struggle head on. Right. But instead of offering dogma. Yeah. You know, yeah, he points us towards this wellspring of peace and mm. fulfillment yeah. that really already exists within us. Right. And he does it by asking such a deceptively yeah. Yeah. simple question. Yeah. What is enlightenment? Yep. And, you know, when you hear that, you might picture, I don't know, a monk meditating on a mountaintop or something. Yeah. But Toller's perspective is so much more grounded. Yeah. I feel it. like he's saying, hey, this isn't some far off concept. Yeah. It's accessible yeah. to everyone. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's for all of us. Totally. And he uses this brilliant analogy of a beggar. Yes. Sitting on a treasure chest. Right completely oblivious to the wealth beneath him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he suggests that so many of us are just like that beggar. Okay. Completely unaware of the inner riches yeah. that are waiting to be discovered. Okay. So we're sitting on this treasure chest yeah. of inner peace and joy and all this good stuff. Yeah. How do we actually Ro open it? Yeah. How do we open it? How do Tole and say someone like Buddha yeah. How do they define enlightenment? Well, Buddha famously called it the end of suffering. Right. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? Yeah. But Tolle digs even deeper. Okay. You know, he describes it as this state of oneness with being. Okay. It's this profound feeling of interconnection mm -hmm. with something f far greater than ourselves. Okay. That we're a part of something so much bigger. So it's not just about like feeling good, but right. about fundamentally yes. changing how we see ourselves. Well, the world. And the world, like connecting to yes. that larger reality. Absolutely. And that shift, yeah. Tully argues, begins with recognizing the difference between our true selves okay. and with but, the voice in our heads. Oh boy. That constant chatter of the mind. This is where it gets really interesting yeah. because he doesn't just say, oh, the mind can be distracting. Right. He calls it a dreadful affliction. Mm -hmm. That's intense. Intense. Yeah. He equates our thoughts to an addiction, a yeah. real obstacle to experiencing Poorly. our true self. Yes. And it might sound extreme, yeah. but think about it. When you actually pay attention to your own mind, yeah, you start to notice how relentless it can be. Totally. That nonstop loop of worries and plans and judgments. Yeah. I mean, most of it has nothing to do right. with what's actually happening yeah. in this moment. It's like having a radio stuck on a station yes. that you can't quite switch off, totally. even if you don't like the song. Exactly. And just like that radio drowns out the sounds around you, Yeah, our minds can prevent us from experiencing yeah. the fullness of the present moment. Right. We become so fixated on Problems, regrets, anxieties, mm -hmm. even when it makes us miserable. Okay, so if we're addicted to our own thinking, yeah, how do we break free? Right. Like, do we just try to stop thinking altogether? Well, Tolly says that trying to force our minds to be quiet okay. is like trying to hold back a tidal wave. Yeah. It's simply not sustainable. Okay. Instead, it's about becoming aware of our thoughts. Okay. Observing them without judgment, as if they're just clouds. Yeah. Passing through the sky. Okay. He calls this watching the thinker. Okay, so we're not trying to like shut off our minds completely. Right. But to change our relationship to yeah. our thoughts. Exactly. Instead of getting swept away by them. Yeah. We create some breathing room. Yes. And in that space, that gap between thoughts. Yeah. We can begin to experience these glimpses. Okay. Of our true nature. Mm. The stillness, the peace, yeah. the joy that's always present beneath the surface. Mm. That's the treasure we're uh, about covering. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about creating that space between our thoughts. Yeah. That's where we find all the good stuff. Yeah. But how do we actually do that? Yeah. How do we bridge that gap between our, yeah. you know, our busy minds? Yeah. And that sense of presence that he talks about. Right. But he offers a lot of different practices. Okay. But I think one of the most powerful is simply becoming aware of our inner body. Okay. 
And I know that might sound a little... In your body. Yeah. Does that mean like yeah. chanting an incense? No, not quite. Okay. Um, it's actually very practical. Okay. It's really about shifting our attention from that whirlwind of thoughts okay. to the physical sensations within our body. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. So instead of like getting lost in my to-do list, right. I might notice the feeling of my feet on the ground. Yeah. Or even just like the sensation of my shirt against my skin. Exactly. Okay. It could be anything. The gentle rise and fall of your breath. Yeah. The warmth in your hands. Okay. You know, the key is to really consciously inhabit mm -hmm. your physical form to really be present in your body. And by doing that, we start to reclaim our attention from the mind. Yes. And tap into that aliveness of the present moment. Precisely because the body is always in the body. Yeah. Now it doesn't dwell on the past. Right. It doesn't fret about the future. Right. It simply exists vibrantly in this moment. That makes so much sense. It's like our bodies are these incredible instruments of presence. Right. But we so often forget to listen to them. We do. We're so caught up in our heads. Yeah that we miss out on the wisdom of our own physical experience. Yes, and as we tune into our bodies more deeply, yeah. we also start to notice something else. What's that? Our emotions. Oh boy. Right. Emotions talk about a roller coaster ride. Yeah, they can definitely be intense. Yeah. But here's the thing. Okay. Tolly has this really interesting perspective on emotions. Okay. He sees them as the body's way of reflecting what's happening in the mind. Okay, so if our minds are racing with anxious thoughts yes our bodies respond with that familiar surge of like exact stress and tension exactly it's like our emotions are the physical manifestation yeah, of our yeah. mental state but emotions themselves aren't necessarily bad are they exactly okay he calls them emotion okay energy in motion okay they're natural and they have a purpose mm. but the problem he argues is that yeah we often get so swept away by them yeah we get like we become so entangled with our emotions yeah that we lose sight of that stillness within it's like getting caught in a rift current yes you're so busy trying to stay afloat yeah that you forget you can just swim back to shore that's a great analogy yeah so it's not about trying to suppress or deny our emotions okay but about learning to observe them Okay. Without getting carried away. Easier said than done. It is. Especially when those emotions feel really intense. It definitely takes practice. Yeah. But the more we can observe our emotional patterns mm -hmm. without judgment, yeah. the more we can start to understand their yeah. root causes Okay. and ultimately free ourselves from their grip. It's like we become emotional archaeologists. I love that. Carefully excavating the layers of our own experience. Yes. But there's more to it than that. Right. Because Toll suggests that even like our most challenging emotions can actually be catalysts. Absolutely. Yeah. He says that negative emotions like fear or anger okay. can serve as a wake up call. Okay. They force us to confront the limitations of our ego yeah. and open us up to a deeper reality. It's like that saying sometimes you have to break down to break through. Exactly. Yeah. Those difficult experiences, as painful as they can be in the moment. Yeah have the potential to shatter the illusion of our ego mm -hmm. and reveal our true strength and resilience. So it's not about pretending those negative emotions don't exist, right? but about learning to navigate them with more awareness. Exactly. Seeing them as like potential teachers on the path to enlightenment. Precisely. Yeah. And this is where another key concept from the book comes into play. Okay, what's that? Surrender. Okay, surrender. This one feels a little paradoxical to me. Yeah, I can see that. Because doesn't it contradict yeah. our human desire to make things better? Yeah. To strive for progress? Right. If we just surrender to whatever's happening, wouldn't that lead to complacency? That's a common misconception. Okay. Tulay's idea of surrender isn't about giving up or right. becoming passive. Right. It's about aligning ourselves with the flow of life. Yeah, okay. About accepting the present moment without reservation. So it's more about letting go of our need to control everything. Yes. To force things to be a certain way. Exactly. It's about recognizing that fighting against reality mm -hmm. only creates more suffering. But how do we reconcile surrender yeah. with our desire for positive change? Well, he explains that true surrender yeah. is not about inaction. Okay. It's about choosing our actions yeah. from a place of conscious alignment with the present moment. Okay, so instead of acting from a place of like fear, yes, anxiety, frustration, exactly, we're acting from a place of acceptance and presence. Yes, and when we act from that place of peace, mm -hmm. our actions have a completely different quality. Okay, they're more effective. Yeah, 
more aligned with our true purpose. Yeah. So it's not about like giving up on our goals mm. or aspirations. Yeah. It's about approaching them from a more yes. conscious, present centered state. Exactly. Tolly would say that the present moment yeah. is the only place where we can truly create anything. Okay. The past is gone. Right. The future is uncertain. Mm -hmm. All we have is now. This is really making me rethink my own relationship with surrender. Yeah. I think I've always associated it with weakness. Yeah. But I'm seeing it now as this like incredibly powerful act yeah. of alignment. And it's not always easy. In mm -hmm. fact, he talks about how the ego, yeah. that part of us that clings to control, yeah. can fiercely resist surrender. Yeah. Because letting go of control can feel terrifying. It can. It's like stepping off a cliff and trusting that you'll somehow right. learn to fly on the way down. Exactly. The ego wants to hold on to its familiar patterns, yeah. even if they're causing suffering. Right. But he suggests that through surrender, we actually discover our true selves. Okay. That boundless, timeless essence that lies beyond all limitations. So it's not about becoming someone else. Right. But about uncovering who we already are. Yes. Beneath all the layers of ego identification. And that discovery, that realization. Yeah. Is the heart of enlightenment. Okay. This is all incredibly powerful. But I have to ask, what about happiness? Yeah. Because ultimately, isn't that what we're all right. searching for? A sense <laughs> of lasting peace and fulfillment? It's certainly a common goal. Yeah. But Tolly makes this really crucial distinction between happiness okay. and inner peace. Okay. So happiness is more fleeting. Yes. Dependent on external circumstances. Exactly. Whereas inner peace is a deeper state of being yes. that doesn't rely on anything outside of ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. He points out that happiness is often conditional. Okay. We feel happy when things are going our way right. and unhappy when they're not. Yeah. But true inner peace is unconditional. Yeah. It's a state of acceptance that transcends the ups and downs of life. And this is where that Buddhist concept of dukkha comes in. Yes. Right? Exactly. The idea that like suffering or unsatisfactoriness right. is an inherent part of life. Precisely. Dukkha points to the mm. impermanent nature of all things. Yeah. Everything is constantly changing, arising and passing away. So even when we experience pleasure or happiness, yes. it's inevitably going to fade. Exactly. Which can leave us feeling like empty or unfulfilled. Yes. And it's this constant striving. Yeah. For something that's always just out of reach, this clinging to fleeting pleasures mm. that creates so much suffering. It's like trying to build a house on shifting sand. Totally. You might experience those moments of stability. Yeah. But eventually the ground is going to shift beneath you. Exactly. And, and that's why he emphasizes yeah. the importance of finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. Yes. Of learning to appreciate the beauty and wonder that's present. Yeah. In every moment, regardless of our external circumstances. He tells that great Zen story. Yes. About a butcher. Yes. Who becomes enlightened. Man's and the butcher. Man's and the butcher. Yes. Okay. He realized that every piece of meat he had was the best he'd ever seen. A butcher becomes enlightened. That sounds Wait. kind of counterintuitive to say the least. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. But the point is that yeah. when we can fully accept mm. what is without, without judgment or resistance, mm -hmm. Every moment has the potential to be the best moment of our lives. So it's not about seeking out right. some grand, extraordinary experience. Exactly. But about finding that sense of wonder and appreciation yes. in the midst of our everyday lives. Yeah. Like instead of rushing through my morning coffee, totally. I might take a moment to really savor the aroma, the taste, yes. the warmth of the mug in my hand. Exactly. Yep. True joy and fulfillment aren't found in some distant future. Yeah. They're available to us right now. Right. In the present moment. Okay. This is all starting to click for me. Good. But what about our relationships with others? Yeah. Because those can be a huge source of both joy Absolutely. and suffering. They can. How does Tolly's perspective on presence and enlightenment yeah. apply to our interactions with the people we love? That's a great question. And Tolly has some really insightful things to say about relationships. Okay. He sees them as a spiritual practice. Okay. A mirror yeah. that reflects our own internal state of consciousness. Okay. So... If we're bringing a lot of baggage from the past yes. into our relationships, if we're carrying around resentment, insecurity, 
fear, no, exactly. those things are going to manifest they do. in our interactions with others. He points out that so many relationship problems yeah. stem from our own unresolved issues, mm -hmm. yeah. our own fears and insecurities. Yeah. We project our own stuff onto our partners, right. which can lead to conflict and misunderstanding. And he talks about how our relationships can actually be these yes. incredible opportunities for growth. Absolutely. Right. Like when we're triggered by something our partner does or says. Yes. It's an opportunity to look inward and see what's really going on beneath the surface. Because those moments of conflict can be incredibly revealing. Right. They show us where we're still holding on to pain. Yeah. Where we're still resisting the present moment. So instead of blaming our partners right. for our own emotional reactions. <laughs> exactly. We can use those experiences as opportunities. Yeah. To become more conscious, more aware of our own patterns and triggers. Exactly. But what happens... Right when one partner is more awake than the other. Okay. You know, he mentions this example of a woman okay. who's struggling to connect with an emotionally unavailable man. That's a tough situation. It is. It's like they're speaking different languages. Right. And in those situations, he really emphasizes yeah. the importance of compassion and understanding. So it's not about trying to force our partners to change. Right. Or to enlighten them. Right. But about meeting them where they are with acceptance and love. Exactly. It's about recognizing that everyone is on their own unique journey. Yeah. And we can't force anyone to awaken right. any faster than they're ready. That makes me think of that saying, you can lead a horse to water. Right. But you can't make it drink. Exactly. Yeah, we can share what we've learned. Right. But ultimately, it's up to each individual to choose their own path. Okay, that's really helpful. Yeah. But what about yeah. when someone is struggling with their own sense of identity? Yeah. I remember he mentions a question about uh, whether being gay yeah. presents a particular challenge on the path to enlightenment. Right. What's his take on that? Well, he basically reiterates his central point. Okay. That true liberation comes from transcending all limiting self-identifications. So it's not about trying to fit into any particular mold or category, right. but about recognizing that formless, timeless essence that lies beyond yeah. all labels and definitions. Exactly whether those labels are based on our sexual orientation, hmm. our gender, our race, our religion. Yeah. They're all ultimately constructs of the mind. Mm. They're not who we truly are. It's about recognizing that our true nature yes. is not defined by any external factor. Exactly. It's that pure, unconditioned consciousness yes. that's present in every being. Beautiful. Regardless of their circumstances or their story. And when we can let go of those limiting self-identifications, yeah. we open ourselves up to a much deeper level of freedom and authenticity. It's like we're finally able to exhale yeah. and just be ourselves without yes. judgment or reservation. Beautiful. This conversation has really challenged me yeah. to re-examine my own relationship with presence, with my emotions, with the very nature of happiness. Yeah. But there's one more thing I wanted to ask you about. Okay. This whole conversation about letting go of labels and stories yeah. reminds me of another key concept from the power of now that we haven't really touched on yet. Okay. The pain body. Right. What is this exactly? Yeah, what is that? And why does Tolly say it's so important to become aware of it? Well, the pain body is this fascinating. Yeah. And let's be honest, somewhat unsettling concept. Okay. It's essentially this accumulation of unresolved emotional pain. Okay. That we all carry around from our past experiences. Yeah. It's like this invisible weight mm -hmm. that can drag us down and keep us trapped in these cycles of negativity and suffering. Okay, so it's not just that we have the memories right. of those painful events. Yeah. It's that the emotional energy of those events exactly. can actually get stuck in our bodies yes. and continue to influence our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors, mm -hmm. even if we're not consciously aware of it. Exactly. The pain body thrives on being unconscious. Okay. It's like this shadow self that feeds on negativity and drama. Oh, wow. It can rear its head in all sorts of ways through addictive patterns. Okay. Self-sabotaging behaviors, relationship conflicts, even physical ailments. So if we're not aware of our pain body, it can kind of hijack us from behind the scenes, Jackson. driving us to act in ways that aren't really aligned with right. our deepest values and aspirations. Precisely. It's like having this virus running in the background of your computer, right. you know, slowing everything down and causing all sorts of problems. That's a great analogy. So, yeah. Okay, so how do we deal with this pain body? Yeah. Do we try to just ignore it and hope it goes away? Well, Tolly would say that ignoring it is the worst thing we can do. Okay. 
The more we try to suppress or deny our pain body, the stronger it becomes. Okay. The key is to bring it into the light of consciousness. Okay. To observe it with compassion and understanding. So it's about turning towards our pain rather than away from it. Exactly. That feels counterintuitive, but I can start to understand why it's important. It's definitely not always easy. Right. But it's incredibly liberating. Yeah. And as we shine the light of awareness on our pain body, it begins to lose its grip on us. And this is where the body comes back into play because yeah. we've talked about the body as this portal to presence. Exactly. But it's also the storehouse of all this unresolved emotional energy. Precisely. Right. Tolly really emphasizes the importance of becoming aware of the sensations in our bodies. Okay. Not just as a way to connect with the present moment, but also as a way to... Okay access and release the accumulated pain that we're holding on to. So it's not just about noticing the pleasant sensations, right. but also being willing to turn towards like the uncomfortable ones. Yes. The places where we feel tension, tightness, restriction. Yes, because those physical sensations are often clues to where our pain body is residing. This is making me think about those times when I've just felt this knot in my stomach or this tightness in my chest. Yeah. And instead of trying to push those sensations away, yeah. What if I could learn to like approach them with curiosity and compassion? Exactly. Mm. Tolly would say, what can you learn from this sensation? Right. What is it trying to tell you? It's about befriending our bodies, listening to their wisdom, mm -hmm. and creating a space for healing and integration. It sounds like we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. Mm. We've explored yeah. the nature of enlightenment, mm -hmm. the power of presence, the challenges of the mind the importance of the body, right. the transformative potential of our emotions, yeah. the liberating practice of surrender. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else we should touch on before we wrap up this exploration of the power of now? Well, I think it's worth circling back to this idea of finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. Yeah. Because ultimately, that's what Toll is inviting us to do, mm -hmm. to wake up to the miracle of this present moment. Right. Right even amidst the messiness and uncertainty of everyday life. Yeah, it's so easy to get caught up in like the striving, is the seeking, yeah. the constant pursuit of something outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But he reminds us that true fulfillment is available to us it is. right here, right now. Yes. If we can just open our eyes to see it. Exactly. It's about approaching our lives with a sense of childlike wonder. Yeah. Appreciating the simple things, mm -hmm. a beautiful sunset, mm -hmm. a heartfelt conversation, yeah. a warm cup of tea on a chilly morning. It's about shifting our attention from what's missing to what's already present. Yes. From what we lack to what we already have. Beautiful. Right. And when we make that shift, even the most ordinary moments can become infused with a sense of grace and gratitude. This deep dive into the power of now has been both challenging and inspiring. Yeah, me too. It's given me so much to think about and, more importantly, to put into practice in my own life. Absolutely. Beautiful. So, Tolly's message is simple. Yeah. But it's not always easy. Right. It takes courage to face our own minds, our own patterns, our own pain. Yeah. But the rewards are immeasurable. Because ultimately, it's about waking up to the fullness of who we truly are. Yes. Not as these separate, isolated individuals, but as expressions of something yes. much greater than ourselves. Exactly. And in that realization, in that connection to something beyond the limited ego, mm -hmm. we find true peace, true joy, true freedom. I love that. And if, as Tolle suggests, yeah. the greatest obstacle to enlightenment is our own attachment to time, mm -hmm. then perhaps the greatest gift we can give ourselves is the gift of presence. Beautiful. To meet this moment and every moment with, with open hearts and open minds. Yes. Ready to experience the extraordinary and the ordinary. Beautifully said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the power of now. Yeah, thank you. We hope it's inspired you to explore Tolly's work further hmm. and to discover your own path to living a more present and fulfilling life. Absolutely. Until next time, may you find peace and joy in the power of now.